Dell Tech has just released version 6.1 of the Acumen Suite. This new version adds a series of features and enhancements. In this video, I'll go through these at a high level, and then we'll go into the tool and I'll show you how some of them work. One highly anticipated feature that is now available is risk analysis reporting for hourly schedules. In the past, the Acumen Risk software permitted the use of hourly schedules as an input and as part of its calculations, but the results were presented exclusively in days. No more. Now you can easily tell Acumen Risk if you'd prefer your risk outputs in either days or hours. In fact, this one-of-a-kind risk driver report has been one of the flagship features since the inception of Acumen Risk, and now it just got even better. One of the more common uses of this chart is to observe the impact of risk mitigation plans. By running the risk model, mitigating risk, and then rerunning, the team can see which bars are getting smaller, meaning that the mitigation is having the desired effect to the risk profile of the project. The new Risk Driver Comparison Report allows you to see pre-mitigation and post-mitigation driver reports on the same screen. This lets you see which activities are improving and which may be taking on more risk impacts from scenario to scenario. We'll go over how to do this and set this up in more detail in a couple of minutes. Oh, speaking of risk mitigation, the risk register in Acumen Risk has one very significant enhancement. Each mitigation in the risk register can now have a more detailed plan consisting of mitigation steps. These steps can be listed in the software, each as their own detailed line item. Not all steps need to be enabled at all times, and the team can select the optimal set of steps while keeping others handy, but not necessarily include all of them in the current scenario. This helps you separate what can be done for mitigation with what will be done for mitigation. Users who access P6 projects through web services will encounter new import selection options with the ability to filter and group projects so that they can easily navigate and select from the project database for analysis in the Acumen software. Those four new features are just the beginning. There's an overhauled context-sensitive help system, new terminology in the software and tooltips, an improved risk register import, enhanced grouping in S2 diagnostics, and drag-and-drop metrics. More on those during the demonstration. And finally, when you're converting projects between P6 and MS Project, you'll be able to keep user-defined fields completely intact. Looking at the entire new feature set, Release 6.1 continues the tradition of continually raising the bar for the Dell Tech Acumen Suite. I'm going to jump now into the updated version of the software and show you in detail how several of the new features work. Which features? The most exciting ones, of course, but we'll be showing off all of them in upcoming videos. Let's start with some of the diagnostics enhancements. I've opened a project in the software, so let's go over to the S2 Diagnostics tab for some analysis. As usual, I can come to this screen, click the orange Fuse button, and I'm in business, scoring my schedule and finding opportunities to improve the quality. In the past, when you wanted to slice and dice the information to sort out all the details, you were presented with a very long list of fields. Now you have three categories of fields. It's not a dramatic change, but I find that I'm often grouping information by my custom fields, which are now on a much smaller list of general fields, with inputs and outputs which I use less often in their own sections. So now, when I want to group in a custom field like location, it's right here for me and I don't need to go searching for it. This helps me work more quickly, and that really is part of Acumen's goal. Get in, analyze, improve, and get out. Oh, one more thing on the diagnostic screen. I can now move these metrics around on the fly. So if I want to bring a little extra attention to these yellow and red items, I can drag and drop them to the left side of the metric listing. Oh, and the same down here on the phase analyzer too. Drag, drop. And now, on to some of the improvements in Acumen Risk. I've set up a risk model that has both duration uncertainty and a risk register which has risk items mapped to the schedule. There are some risk mitigations in my risk register, but I kept them disabled for the first run.
looking at the tornado chart, I definitely have some risk impacts on this project. Now we lock in the chart for future comparison, and I run the simulation again, but this time I'm going to make mitigation active. We'll add the new tornado chart to the comparison and then display the new risk driver comparison report. We can see that some areas of my schedule improve with mitigation, but we may also have had some unintended consequences when we mitigated certain areas. In short, we got what we were asking for, but it also came at a price to some other areas of the project. Now, I'm not going to spend time making new mitigation plans right now, but what I will do is show you how you can toggle this view over to hours instead of days. Go to S1 Projects, Activity View, Display Settings, and then change your duration time unit from days to hours. That's it. We head back over to S3 Risk, and our same chart as before is now expressed in hours. It's easy to set it for hours, and then you'd follow the same steps in reverse to toggle it back to days. Now let's talk about the new mitigation steps. Before, each risk had one possible path to mitigation. Now your mitigation plans can be a bit more intricate and detailed if you desire. By opening the risk register in the left panel and then clicking to this tab, I can view current mitigation steps if there's any there and start adding my own. Let's just call this first one step one, and I'll add a couple of more steps as well. I can enter the investment needed for each, and the return on investment for each, and then I can choose which to activate for the current scenario. Now when I run the simulation, the active steps will be part of the equation, while the inactive ones won't, unless we decide to go ahead and activate them. Folks, Release 6.1 is now currently available. If you have any questions about the software or how to upgrade, let us know. Here's some ways to get in touch with us.